let's get started. This is one of my favorite times of the month where I get to come together with you all and talk about all things marriage. It's my one of my favorite things to talk about. Honestly, my favorite thing to talk about is empowering you women to become your true, authentic self, right? To live into that person you dream of being. But anyway, that's how I do it. I do it through those of us who have are unhappy in our marriage. And I'm not unhappy in my marriage anymore. Well, some days I am, some moments I am, but that's how I help you. So welcome. Um, This month, we are talking about the same thing as usual, how to change your marriage, how you feel about your marriage without changing your spouse. And we're going to do that this month by talking about self-esteem. So most of you know me now, but um, I am Chris Bongiovanni. I am a marriage and relationship. I am a love coach and I help individuals and couples find the courage and inspiration to change their marriage without doing what they really want to do, which is they want to change their spouse. Been there still in there sometimes. And I'm going to help you do that by moving um, forward with the work we did in last month's Marriage Masterclass. For those of you that watched the class on replay or were there live, um, what we talked about last month was boundaries. But I want you to know that it is not necessary for you to have watched previous month's masterclasses. You can pick them up whenever You can watch previous uh, um, classes if you want, but what I really recommend is that you take the class that you're listening to this month and apply it to your life. Take the action steps that I um, suggest that you take at the end of the class and actually do them, okay? So tonight we are going to start by looking at what healthy self-esteem is and compare that to the opposite extreme, which is unhealthy self-esteem. And we're going to talk about why self-esteem is critical to the work you will need to do in order to implement the steps of rebuilding your marriage. A lot of people are like, what does self-esteem have to do with marriage? And you're going to find out. We're going to look at two different elements or parts of self-esteem, what makes up healthy self-esteem. And um, you are going to see the incredible power that comes when we do the transformative work um, in our marriage and how self-esteem is going to help you do that work. And then again, as normal, I will at the end share three actionable steps for you to take this month that will help you build your self-esteem, giving you the strength it will take to create your best life. Now, many of you might be thinking, my self-esteem is really good, Chris. And that is fine. I am so glad. But we can always work on improving our self-esteem. And I'm going to talk, I am going to talk about that when we, when we get into it. But before we do that, um, I would like to, first of all, I'd love to hear how all of you are doing over there in, um, in internet land, um, if you feel so inclined, drop yourself emoji, an emoji in the comments to let me know you're here um, and to share how you think your self-esteem is right now. Um, maybe it's uh, like a strong or maybe it's not so great or maybe you're like, oh, I don't know. Um, but no matter how you're feeling about your self-worth or your belief in your ability to manifest the desired marriage goals your desired marriage goals right now. I'm super glad that you're here. And if you're watching this on replay, please share in the comments, hashtag replay, so that I know you were here before we actually start. 
what I want to share is some tips to how as to how to get the most out of this class. First of all, if you're listening on replay or you're listening live, make sure you clear distractions out of your space. Turn up the volume, put some earbuds, noise canceling headphones on, grab some paper, something to write with, submit questions at the time that you register for this class. I have two questions that I'm going to get to at the end of this class. And that is going to help you like wherever you're stuck. And it doesn't necessarily even need to be around the topic of the class because all of our questions help each and every one of us. Um, participating in the comment section. So I can speak specifically to what each of you are struggling with in your own relationship, even if you're watching this on replay, because I catch the comments and I can comment back to you. I can take your question and bring it into next month's masterclass. You can volunteer to get coached when that opportunity opportunity comes towards the end. And then at the end of this class, stick around to the end. Don't cut out early. I am going to share um, a gift that I have for you for watching all the way to the end. I have a list here and I'm going to read them off to you, but screenshot it. Take a screenshot of this list. And I'll tell you why in a moment, but let's look at it. So healthy self-esteem, if you think about it, is self-confidence, feelings of self-confidence. Now, self-confidence is different from confidence. How? The difference is confidence is something that you build. Self-confidence can be built as well. But confidence comes from like, let's use the riding the bike example. If I have never ridden a bike, I don't have a whole lot of confidence about whether I could or could not. I could have a lot of self-confidence and like, hey, give me that bike. I'm going to try and I might fall on my face, but it doesn't mean anything about who I am as a person. That's self-confidence. Okay. Um, it's healthy self-confidence. It's not arrogance. It is just like, hey. I might fall, I might not ever learn how to ride that bike, but it's not a big deal. It doesn't mean anything about who I am as a person. High levels of self-respect and evaluation of yourself. So you don't beat yourself up and, and say bad things, mean things to yourself. You're not a bully to yourself. Feeling able to handle what other people present to you. So in your marriage, we're going to focus on the marriage relationship, but in your marriage, let's say uh, your spouse presents something to you that you don't like, or you don't agree with. Maybe it's, you know, they say they're going to be home at five o'clock and they consist, they get home at six and you're okay with yourself. You're able to handle that in a calm, collected, self-assured way. You get to confront whatever it is that might be bothering you. If there is anything, I mean, maybe, maybe you don't care. Okay. Feeling masterful in creating the life that you desire. Now, this was totally one place in my life that I felt like I was a hamster on the hamster wheel, spinning, spinning, spinning. Like I was like, I don't know how I will ever create the life that I want to live. It just seemed like it was, I was never going to get there. A sense of capability, a sense of being capable of figuring things out, a sense that other people do and ought to admire and respect you in a healthy way. So in your marriage relationship, we should love and admire and respect each other, right? And we fully deserve it, not in a superior sort of way, but in an equal sort of way. An absence of shyness, timidity, self-consciousness, or embarrassment. Now, again, these are all the extreme end of healthy self-esteem. There are going to be times that we might be shy, but why are we shy? Typically, we're shy because we're afraid of how other people might perceive us. Timidity is holding back 
that which we sort of desire inside. There's a difference between timidity and shyness from a confident perspective. It wouldn't be called shyness or timidity. It would be you, you just holding back, observing, and not having the desire to speak up or do anything. And I hope that makes sense. Um, a feeling of healthy pride and healthy pride comes when you learn how to cultivate genuine relations. I'm going to pause this again a little bit. Um, healthy pride um, comes when you learn how to cultivate genuine relationships, skills and competencies that make us proud of our accomplishments without hiding, like, oh, it's no big deal. We, you know, that really isn't that great. Or making excuses about our compliment or our compliments, our accomplishments, or puffing ourselves up because of them. Know that most of us have room to grow in each area. All right. When you look at this list, I want you to pick one. You might have room to grow in all of them. I do. Um, but I'd like you to write down one area that you want to commit to working to on this month. And you're going to keep that area in mind when we get to the action steps later. So write it down or highlight it. Let's move on to healthy self-esteem. Oh, I'm sorry. We did healthy self-esteem. So unhealthy self-esteem. I will share the screen again. There we go. All right. So unhealthy self-esteem is when we take actions that appear to show self-esteem. So it's kind of like we have self-esteem outfit on. But the feeling driving the action is not self-esteem, but some sort of overcompensating emotion that comes from a sense of insecurity. And so look at that list, acting hostile, deliberate mistreatment, being impolite to somebody, being selfish, aggressive, cruel, acting from contempt. Okay, so in the slide, I am highlighting this mainly because I think next month we might be talking about abolishing, eliminating contempt from our lives and using that as the practice for next month. But contempt is emotional violence. It is shaming someone. Maybe some of you have experienced this in your life, somebody doing this to you. And then maybe you modeled that back in a different relationship. You were contemptuous to somebody else. So it's emotional violence, shaming someone, treating them as less than you. It can be directed towards someone else, which is what we call grandiosity, or it can be directed toward ourselves, which is the feeling of shame. And this unhealthy self-esteem is the opposite of self, of calm assurance, okay? So I'm going to stop my share. Unhealthy self-esteem self -esteem is more dominating or exercising power over another person. It's more about treating others from a superior position in an attempt to push them down, hurt them, make them feel less than you. And so that is not healthy self-esteem, okay? And an easy way to check in with yourself before you take action with somebody is to check in to see if this is coming from a healthy place or an unhealthy place is to pause and ask yourself, this question. I should have put it in the slides, but I did not. Does what I am about to say or do fall below the level of basic respect? I'm going to say that question again. Does what I am about to say or do 
fall below the level of basic self, of basic self-respect. And if you judge what you're about to say as disrespectful, then my suggestion is you keep those words or those actions to yourself. And this actually goes both ways when it comes to self-esteem and not standing for someone who is disrespectful to you. Either you speak up and you say, hey, I will not tolerate being treated that way, being spoken to that way, or you leave and you simply explain why you're leaving. Now, if you feel safe doing so, go ahead and share any of these traits that you might see in yourself, knowing that all of us have healthy, unhealthy self-esteem tendencies. So there is no shame to be had in recognizing any of these in yourself. This is why we're here to learn and grow and progress towards a healthier self-esteem. I want to check in real quick. First, I do want to say that for myself, I have experienced all of these. I have acted hostile, especially when I was younger. Um, I would say, you know, but deliberate mistreatment for sure. And that can look in look all sorts of different ways, just deliberately maybe not being nice to somebody in a way like not offering an affirmation because you feel less than. And so that's unhealthy self-esteem where we're withdrawing what really would be a nice affirmation for somebody. Maybe they completed a project at work that they're really proud of. And instead of like, that is so good. So awesome. I'm so proud of you. Just kind of dismissing it. Okay. So let's check in. How are you doing? Does anybody have any questions uh, before I move on, come back on and focus, come, come listen. If you've kind of based off or something, a notification has gone off on your phone. So let's look next at why health, why building healthy self-esteem is essential to the process of rebuilding your marriage. So listen, this part is important. Healthy self-esteem is essential in our marriage because We have to be able to separate ourselves out from our spouses, okay? When we are deeply enmeshed or dependent on our spouse to lift lift us up, show us our worthiness, help us feel self-secure, we put ourselves in, in very rough waters. We're putting our our feelings in the hands of somebody else. So think about that. If our spouse relies on us to lift them up all the time, make them feel good, they're relying on us always focusing on them, always thinking about them, us always having the energy to do that us not ever having a bad day where we might forget to do that. Does that make sense? So that's why we always want to be the producers, the manifestors of our own self-esteem. Healthy self-esteem allows us to differentiate ourselves from our spouses. Differentiation is something I talk about a lot. You can go to the podcast, Awaken You in Your Marriage podcast and search differentiation. It is a key thing that I talk about in the process of helping people in their marriage because differentiation is not enmeshment. It's not independence. It's interdependence. It's us being able to be who we are, stand in our truth and be able to love and serve our spouses, right? 
it allows us to maintain our course when others pressure us to agree and conform. So our spouses might want us to agree, agree with their perspective. And we don't need to. We don't have to agree on everything. It allows you to agree with another person. So you could agree, okay, I see your perspective without feeling like we have to lose ourselves or fully like in our heart agree with their position, right? Or we can disagree without feeling alienated or embittered. All right. So when our self-esteem comes from our partner, we find ourselves emotionally fused to our spouse. We have lost our individuality. And then there are a lot of us women who have been brought up to be independent, don't need our partners for anything. And there is that what that ends up creating is a parallel marriage where kind of like you're living together with your partner, but you're not really interacting. Okay. It makes us powerless to creating the life that we want because we are constantly needing our spouse to validate what we need. So when we have a strong sense of who we are, we can be separate from our spouse and allow them to be who they are and be able to love them at the same time. All right. Are we following? Next, let's look at what self-worth looks like. I am going to share my screen again. And there are two different aspects of, um, oops, missed a page. So self-esteem can be looked at as two different aspects. We have self-worth and we have self-mastery. And so let's first look at what self-worth is. Self-worth, and you can take a screenshot of this screen. This is where you're going to get the affirmations for the exercises. So take a screenshot, look at these statements, and I want you to see how much you agree or disagree with each one. And you can maybe put a percentage, like 50%, 25%, 70%, 100 So do you like yourself? Do you think that you're a wonderful human being? Are you comfortable with who you are? Are you secure in your sense of self-growth? Do you have self-respect? Self-worth is your evaluation of your overall sense of self. Are you fundamentally a good person with social value in the world? Um, and we often gather our self-esteem from other people's. Like we look at other people to see how they're judging us and what they're thinking of us versus getting our self-esteem from within, like not really worrying about what other people think of us. And I do want to also add a caveat to that, that, you know, we might need to examine ourselves when we find that people are constantly turning us away, right? There might be something that we're doing as we're showing up that might be causing people to turn away from us. Then we have the second part of self-esteem is self-mastery. All right. So let's look at these statements and see how much you agree or disagree with each. I'm highly effective at the things I do. I almost always am able to accomplish what I try for. I perform, perform well at very at many things. My words, I need some water. I perform well at many things. I often fulfill my goals. I deal well with challenges in my life instead of being a victim to the challenges in my life. So 
with self-esteem, we've got how we think about ourselves. And then we've got our ability to create our life. And mastery is the evaluation of your overall sense of agency or a sense of control over your actions and their subsequent subsequent consequences. So think about this with regard to your relationship. Okay. When you think about the relationship you want, do you feel an over, overall sense of control over the actions you take? and the consequences that those actions give you. And that's what we learn in Awaken You in my program is we work on self-worth and building up that portion of your self-esteem. But then we also do a lot of work within the relationship of taking a look at how we show up, the words we speak, and how we deal with the things that we're unhappy with. And we create a mastery for ourselves within our marriage. So think of the development of your self-worth and your mastery as the need to know who we are, as well as what we can do. All right. Now, we are I, I should check to make sure we have don't have any questions. Um, I'm going to stop the share for a second. Hello, hello. Um, let's see. I don't see any questions. So let's move into the last portion. Well, not the last portion. I am going to share some action steps for this month. All right. So today I am going to share three action steps towards creating this better relationship with yourself. And this is going to be a relationship where you better understand who you are, why you do what you do in reaction to some of the things that your spouse does, what you want in your marriage. That is very important to decide. It's like, you know, you set a goal and you figure out like, Why do I want to do this? Because if you don't know your why, you're not going to follow through. All right. And then lastly, you know your why. So in these master classes, I always share three small actionable steps that you can start taking immediately, like tonight, to help you improve first your relationship with yourself and second your relationship with your spouse and watch how that happens as you do this inner work on yourself, you are going to notice that you show up differently in your relationship. And when you show up differently in your relationship, guess what? So does your partner. All right. Now I will say that there is this, what I call the teeter totter dynamic. Uh, We tend to balance ourselves on the teeter totter in our relationships. Okay. And then when one of the part of the two people decide that they want to grow, they want to become a better person. And, and I don't know that I want to say that self-growth is, makes you a better person, but a person who is more self-actualized, who is more peeling, opening up their truth and, Um, speaking their honesty. And so when that happens, they lift themselves up and often the partner will go down, like will push away. But I want you to stay the course because if you continue to hold yourself up here, eventually your partner will come and meet you. Trust me. It will happen. All right. So number one, I'm going to share my screen again. Here is a self-practice and um, the August practice. And you can take a screenshot of that. The first thing I share, always share three different, 
three different steps. And every month there is a mental or spiritual practice. There is a physical practice and there is a mental or emotional practice. Okay. Let me grab some water. So the mental or spiritual practice is the practice of self-acceptance. And this practice you are going to do when you wake up. And I would suggest before you even roll out of bed, I like to become aware of what is going on in my body when I wake up. So I, I don't, I don't jump out of bed right away. I like to create some awareness for what is going on in my body. And then lay on your back, cross your hands over your heart, and say three loving affirmations to yourself of self-worth or self-mastery. So this is where you will I'll just go back on the screen. You will look at these five different, you can have them on your phone you take a screenshot and then these five for self-mastery and pick three of them and just say them. Okay. And then the second exercise is a physical practice. And this month, this is going to seem a little silly, but I absolutely love this practice. It is a minute of shaking your body. Okay. So it is like literally taking your hands, your arms, <laughs> you can't see my legs, but my legs, my other leg, my body. And I just shake for a minute. One, what it does is it wakes you up for sure. And then this is also a way to release tension. If you wake up anxious, which I do often, it helps loosen up that energy, shake it out of your body. It's really good for people who are holding in trauma. It helps shake it and loosen it up. Okay. So it might feel weird. Maybe go in the bathroom, close the door and do your business and then just shake. Okay. You can shake your feet. It feels just good right now, even as I stand here. So that's the second thing. The third thing is your emotional practice. And this month's practice will have you doing both a morning and an evening piece. And it will be centered around one area you choose to improve this month from earlier in the class. So go back to, I'll scroll all the way back for you, the examples of healthy self-esteem. Take a screenshot of that page and pick one that you want to work on. All right. And what you are going to do with that one is you are going to focus on improving that this month, okay? So your morning practice will include picking an emotion that you want to feel for that day, okay? And then you're going to pick a thought that makes you feel that way. You're going to close your eyes and you're going to feel that emotion in your body. And then you're going to pause throughout the day, two, three times, lunch and dinner, to think that thought that you came up for that day and feel that emotion. And what I would suggest is you maybe put it on your reminders or you put it in a note. I like my reminders for this. And let me share an example. For any of you who um, have missed previous classes, the emotional part does build on each other. It does not mean that you have to go back and listen to all of them because you can just pick this up, but um, you can go back and do those pieces as well. But the reason that I want you to pick an emotion that you want to feel that day. I want you to think, take a moment in the morning to think about your day, kind of think through it and think about what kind of day you want to have. Like when you put your head on the pillow at night, how do you want to feel about what you did that day? All right. 
And what we know from what I teach is that our emotions, how we feel are generally often created by our thoughts. Now we do, our body does produce emotion on auto response, but that's usually more in a triggered sort of um, circumstance. So, but like with this work that we're doing, we're intentionally creating an emotion and we want to come up with a thought that will generate that emotion. Okay. So for example, maybe you want to feel aware or conscious throughout the day. And when we talk about self-esteem, so it could be that you're constantly aware of your self-talk. So if one of the things that maybe you were working on, I'm just going to go to my previous notes here. And so let's say one of the things you decide to do is um, high levels of self-respect. You want to increase your self-respect. So you want to feel aware of what happens in your mind. Let's say I'm making this up as an example. And so what is going to create that feeling of awareness and the thought you might think, um, to feel aware or yeah, aware could be something like, I want to create a healthy relationship dynamic. I want to create more self-esteem for myself. And that makes me feel aware, like I'm going to pay attention today. Now, five minutes later, you're probably going to forget this, right? But that's why I want you to, a couple times throughout the day, come back to that feeling and that thought. You could totally use the same thought and emotion all month long, but you might find that that gets old. So play around with that. All right. And then the evening practice, what you're going to do in the evening is you're going to write down three things you accomplished that day. Writing down your accomplishments automatically helps create self-esteem. And this is the mastery portion. It is you seeing what you said you were going to do and what you accomplished and even the things that you accomplished that you didn't expect to accomplish. So that helps create more of the mastery part of self-esteem. And then you're going to pause, close your eyes, and you could maybe do this in bed and embody how it feels to, a, to have accomplished what you did. Okay. Feel that emotion so that you can generate it. All right. And then again, there is, um, I'm going to share this in the comments, but I highly suggest that you go to the episode in um, Awaken You. And it looks like I'm frozen on Facebook, which could very well be. There we go. Um, and search for how to process emotions and listen to that episode. It is a beautiful episode that is like, um, well, well, for sure it will forever be on the, the podcast, but it will be a timeless episode. I use it all the time for people to help them learn how to process their emotions. All right, here we go. Questions. I need some water. I should be checking on my dog. She's probably eating everything she can get her hands on, pens, books. It's crazy. Anyway, so here's a question that I got. And um, this participant is not here live. So here's the question. In this conversation, how do you then address the other factors that we're not responsible for without seeming defensive. All right. So a couple things when this question comes up right off the top is the last part where it says without seeming defensive. So you're either defensive and you're going to show up that way, or you're, you're doing what I often call is, is trying to show up 
I think I'm still sharing my screen, so I'm going to stop sharing. There we go. Okay, so you know you're feeling defensive, but you're trying to show up in a way that's not defensive. You're still going to come across seeming defensive because you are feeling like whatever the feeling is that's driving you to be defensive. It might be resentment or anger. Okay. Now, there is a difference between feeling defensive and like acting on that and knowing that you feel some resentment and that you want to be defensive and maybe even saying out loud, I do feel a bit of resentment. I've processed through this, uh, but I still feel some resentment. So I apologize if I come across a little across a little defensive, but I I want to talk about this. All right. Um, and I'm not positive when I read this question in this conversation is how it starts. And I think what that means when we're talking about self-esteem. Okay. So in the, in the circumstance, and I don't know the, the exact example where you have a higher sense of self-esteem And um, I am going to share an example that might be a part of what you're thinking about. I'm sure it's totally off, but um, that will help me explain. But when, how do you address other factors that we're not responsible for? Okay. So let's look at an example. Okay. So uh, let's see, I came up with an example of, let's say you intentionally, you're being intentional about carving out time with your partner, right? You, you put it out there. Okay. I want to spend an hour every week with you one-on-one, non-interrupted. Our phones are set down. Um, You set a time, you say, Hey, can you be there? Um, you invite them, they agree, and they don't show up. And let's say this has happened more than once. Let's say you're on round three, okay? So in this situation, it could be easy for us to get defensive. We set it up, we planned it, we got confirmation, maybe we got dressed up, traveled to some fancy place, and they simply don't show up. We feel disrespected, we feel unloved, resentful, thinking, you know, something along the lines that they don't care about me. And we come at them from, you know, we can come from them at, (laughs) let's say that again, we can come at them from these emotions that we might be feeling. And what that would look like would be being defensive, blaming, withdrawing, et cetera. And then when we do show up in this way, we're actually not taking care of ourselves. Okay. So the short answer is to take care of yourself first by taking the time to process the emotions that you're feeling, understanding why those emotions are there, and then getting to a place of self-love that, you know, can come when we build a healthy self-esteem practice with ourselves. And then you can come up with a plan for how you want to address your partner. And this is going to take courage. It's going to take the willingness to be open and vulnerable because you're opening up your heart to how you feel about their actions and what you really want instead of closing your heart down and being defensive. That's what happens when we're defensive is we close our heart, we protect ourselves. And so when you do this from a place of healthy self-esteem, it's not that it will be easy, but you will be strong enough to have your own back regardless of how your partner reacts to you. Okay. So, um, Hopefully that helps. And then I have one more question. 
And this question is, how do I fully forgive my partner for betraying me with another man? Thank you for being open and vulnerable participant. Um, forgiveness is a process, right? It takes time. It starts with focusing on here, on you, including all of the work that we're doing this month with building your own healthy self-esteem. It is not something that is one and done because it's going to keep coming back. You're processing grief for sure, right? It is the process of believing in your own self-worth. So really looking at why you're sad. You know, is it sadness because you think you're not good enough? that your self-esteem isn't enough to hold yourself solid. So building your self-confidence, respecting ourselves, knowing that how other people show up is 100% a reflection of their own self-worth, their own self-mastery. And it's not a reflection of who you are. It's a reflection of how they're hurting inside it is the process of grieving the relationship you had hoped for, right? And searching for what that gift might be for you. And I know that if it's fresh, there you're not able to, to see any gift. And so you don't even need to do that. But if you could imagine what the gift might be, Sometimes in intimate relationships, and I am not saying that um, betrayal is something you should go do to try to get some spark back in your relationship, but sometimes it does take things like this to spark some change. All right. So so fully forgiving takes time and your part is to continually be willing to see when you're looking at them and focusing your attention on them and being able to remind yourself, ooh, puppy, she scared me, being able to remind yourself that they are hurting and that people who are in pain do painful things to themselves and to others. So forgiving is never saying that what they did was okay, it was right. It is the work of releasing the power that they have over you in their act of betrayal. All right. And so with both of the participants that shared those questions, I want all of you to know now that we're getting to the end that I am sharing a free mini coaching session uh, for you to work through whatever has come up for you in this class, anything that you're struggling with in your relationship. Uh, and I'm going to share the link to book that in the call. I will also share it um, in the follow-up email that you will receive if you're, you know, if you've been registered if you registered for the class and that link will be in there. And so this month, what I shared with you is information about what good, healthy self-esteem is versus unhealthy self-esteem and why it's so important in our intimate relationship. And then we broke down self-esteem into those two different aspects, self-worth and mastery. And so this month, I want to encourage you to do those three steps that I shared. Um, I am going to be doing them right along with you. I do what I share with you all month long as well. And it's the work never is done. We're always doing this work. All right. And see what happens after a month of building up your self-esteem. Give it time. Give it a month. Take a look at where you are right now. Take a look at where you are 30 days from now and see the change. So every month I focus on one of the many ways you can change your marriage without changing your spouse. 
And you can go back and listen to all of the replays from my Facebook page, or you can go on my YouTube channel. I've started uploading them there as well. Next month's topic might be on destroying contempt, or it might be on sex. I haven't decided yet. I'm not sure. So if you're struggling with something outside of those, or if you want to hear one of those topics, message me and I'll consider it as a topic. Make sure you're on my mailing list so you get notified about what classes are coming up. Remember, mark your calendar for the second Thursday of every month, 5 p.m. Central Time. All right. Thank you. And I will see you next month or I will see you in a mini coaching session or I will see you on social media. I love you all. Ciao.